welcome to Bits of an Artist's Life. I'm Sandy Hester, and in this week's bit, you get two things. First, I wanna tell you about my new Painting Birds class that has just launched. I'm hearing great feedback about it from the kind of mini launches we've been doing this week. I'm going to play a short video here that will let you kind of know about the class. There's a link below if you want to know all about the class, how much, what's in it, all the things. Link below, Painting Birds class. So first let me play that, then we'll come back and I wanna to talk to you about my favorite watercolors, gouache, and acrylic gouache. We'll do all the things. I'll share all my favorite bits about those things when we come back. Let me first start off by talking to you about the difference between watercolor, gouache, and acrylic gouache because I get that question a lot. Most of you are probably familiar with watercolor and how that works. It's water soluble, so once it dries, you can re-wet it, whether on your paper or on the palette. Gouache is the same thing, it's just opaque. So once it dries, it can be re-wet. It's just kind of a I don't know any other word, but opaque. What's interesting is most people don't realize they've actually already been working with gouache if they've been using watercolor, especially if they've bought a watercolor palette, like a set already. I've got a friend I was painting with recently and she was asking about the difference between watercolor and gouache. And I looked at her palette and I said, you've got gouache on your palette. She said, no, this is a watercolor palette. And I'm like, that white on your palette is gouache. That ochre that's on there is a gouache. Gouache is just a more opaque watercolor, that's it. So you more than likely already have some gouache, though it may be labeled watercolor. Just like some of my gouache that I have, it's basically just like my watercolor. So my ultramarine, you can't tell the difference between my watercolor ultramarine and my gouache ultramarine. They're still transparent. I don't even know why they're labeled that. It's just the way the companies sell them that way. I don't know. But if you have a white or even like a light aqua, that's got white in it, which makes it opaque, which makes it a gouache. Or like maybe a light pink on your palette that has white mixed in with probably something like an alizarin crimson, and that makes it actually technically a gouache. Now the difference between acrylic gouache and gouache is the fact that acrylic gouache is basically just acrylic paint that is matte. A lot of acrylic paints, like golden and other ones, are very plasticky looking and shiny when they dry, but matte acrylic paint dries matte. And so if you're using it in your sketchbook, it won't stick together. You can use it on canvas, all of that. I do like to use matte, matter paint on my canvases or large paper that I sell, but I also like to use matte paint, matte acrylic paint in my sketchbooks because they won't stick together. I use my acrylic gouache and other things that I'm gonna show you that aren't labeled acrylic gouache, but basically are. I use them in my sketchbooks and on canvas. And the reason I like to do that is because then I already know their qualities, I know what colors mixes are gonna do, all of that. So I'm getting practice in my sketchbook, but then when I go to canvas, already know what it's gonna do. So let me, oh, let me mention this. So another important thing about acrylic gouache is that it's just like acrylic paint. And once it's dried on the palette or on the paper or canvas, it cannot be re-wet. 
which is nice because then you can layer easier and things don't get muddied. That's why people think gouache is kind of hard. It is hard because it's, it's muddy and you can make it worse if you over mix it. So it's a little bit interesting like that. Let me talk to you about some of the brands that I like in these different categories. And then I'm gonna put you overhead and we'll do some color swatching. I'll show you what's on my watercolor gouache palette. When I was looking at this this morning, I realized that most of the paint on here is gouache. A few watercolors, and uh, but most of them are labeled gouache, even though some of them are labeled gouache but still act like watercolor. I don't know if that's confusing. I hope not, but that's the case. So let me first go through my watercolor brands that I like most. I actually, in my watercolor, don't have a favorite brand. I could have dug through my old bin. Actually, I don't even have to, I can remember. I think Windsor & Newton used to be my favorite. At this point now, I don't really have a favorite. I have several Daniel Smith uh, colors. When I get to showing you my palette, I'll show you the, you'll see the, the Daniel Smith colors. They're fine. There's a couple colors in the Daniel Smith that I can't get in other brands that I really like, like the Cascade Green and the Buff Titanium. I was just thinking I really need my glasses. I'm gonna go grab my glasses. Hold on. Glasses in hand, and I can tell my battery's about to die Urf. on the camera. Well, we'll get through what we can get through. <laughs> okay, the other brand that I have several watercolors in and this is actually the brand that I probably love the most for my gouache, but I have several Holbein watercolors. Holbein is just a really great brand, period. Then the next brand that I have several in, and it's so interesting because all the packaging is so different. I guess some are old and some's new and all that, but Windsor & Newton, as I already mentioned. And here's the different packaging uh, over the years, I guess. Maybe this, this is the newest, this is the oldest. Is this Windsor Newton right here? Yeah. So those are my favorite go-to brands for watercolor. Really all of these, like my watercolors, I just go to a different brand if there's a color that I really like. But otherwise I'm probably gonna go for Holbein. Just overall great, great, great brand. Okay, let's talk about gouache because that's what I have most on my palette. My number one go-to brand is going to be Holbein. And it's this G one. I think maybe the brand is G564, but you just have to make sure they do have an a, a acrylic gouache. So make sure you're looking at the right page with whatever store you're going to. This is gouache, not acrylic gouache that I'm showing you right now. Here's what it looks like in the big tube. In the big tube, I get the white. You can see the difference there. I get my burnt umber in this Utrecht. I really like this brand and I really should, um, Try some of their other colors. They're really affordable and I do like it. Is that a smaller tube? 0.4. Hmm. That may be a small tube. Yeah, but it's affordable. There's a couple colors in the Windsor & Newton gouache that I love and I buy them all the time. One is called Naples Yellow and the other one is Pale Rose Blush. I love these two colors and use them a lot. Another brand that I've recently found that I really like, and I'm going to buy some more colors in them because I just like it. I feel like maybe it was pretty afford affordable too. It's the Royal Talons brand, even though, does this say Royal? Yes, it does say Royal Talons. And this is a gouache. This color I really love, it's olive green. I really like the consistency. I love the color and yeah, I like everything about it. So those are the brands. I'm always gonna go to the Holbein gouache first, but sometimes there's just colors and other brands that I really like. So that is my gouache. Let me tell you about the acrylic gouache. The main acrylic gouache, now remember, acrylic gouache is just going to dry matte. You cannot reconstitute it. It's just like acrylic, but it's matte. So I love, love, love the Turner gouache. You can get that at Jerry's Artorama and I buy a lot of colors in them. In fact, I'm about to buy a whole lot more because I've realized, I'm trying to hold all this up for y'all, I've realized that I really like taking these out on location. I don't squeeze them out on my palette. Usually I just stick my brush down in the tube. That works for me. 
but I love this brand. They have a great range of colors, tons of colors. I do encourage you to not buy a ton of colors, just buy the primaries, like a warm and cool of yellow, warm and cool red, warm and cool blue, and a white. Try not to be tempted in to the, all the other colors, even though I do have a handful. Maybe I should just tell you right now the handful of colors that I really like. I like their jade. I really like, I bought a few of these colors for a couple trips to the beach, to the desert. Grayish beige, grayish brown, pastel sand, vermilion, vermilion, is that how you say that? Mm. Really nice color, and the grayish green. They have a whole range of like grayish colors and they're all really nice, but, so I, I show you those, but I also say don't get, don't get sucked in. It is nice to have the white. They have a couple different whites too. This is the one that I like the best. It's just white. I like to have this just on hand even if I'm using just my watercolor and regular gouache because if you make a mistake, you can squish this on the page and just use it like white out. And once that dries, it's just like paper and you can work right over it. The watercolor and regular gouache will go right over this beautifully. Okay, the other brand that I really like, I think they may be a little more expensive. The Turner you can get pretty cheap is the Holbein gouache. And I have just a few colors that I really like in it. That's the Holbein acrylic gouache. I love this cream. It's called, oh, it's not called cream. It's called ivory white. And I really, really, really like it. It's kind of like a sketchbook page color. And then I also like the ash rose and the navy blue are really nice, but definitely the ivory white. It's kind of a must get. Okay, the other Acrylic gouache that I like. It's in a different form, but it's the Liquitex. And it comes in this form and it's a little more liquidy. Okay, battery's done. Let me change the battery and we'll come back. <sighs> Verf, I hate when I have a battery change because then I forget what I'm saying. Let's put the glasses back on so I can read. Okay, what was I saying? This Liquitex acrylic gouache. It's basically like paint. It's a great consistency. It's a little thinner than something in a tube like this. I'll use this to put it in my paint pots and I like it. I also use this to paint on canvas and other things. So really great acrylic gouache. Another thing that's not labeled acrylic gouache but is exactly the same is a flash paint. You've heard me talk about flash paint a lot if you've been here on this channel for a while. I love it. It's got a great consistency. It dries matte, completely matte. It's just beautiful. It comes in great colors. It comes in glass jars. This is the small jar. You can tell how big it is. It comes in larger jars also. I just love it. So I use this to paint on you know, my sketchbooks, on canvas, on paper, all the things. It works just like acrylic gouache. It is actually a vinyl. It's like very, very, very old. It's been around for forever. It's made, I think, in France and yeah, Paris. It's like the first acrylic that was ever out. It's great. Lots of artists to use it. Okay, those are my brands and a little info on the difference between watercolor, gouache, and acrylic gouache and the brands that I purchase and love. Let's switch to overhead and do some swatching and I'll tell you more about the colors that are on my palette and we'll do that together. Okay, I've cut tons of stuff surrounding me and there's a few things that I want to show y'all with watercolor, gouache, and acrylic gouache. I wanna show you some of my favorite colors. At the end, I'm going to show you a whole palette that is on my watercolor gouache palette with the swatches and the tubes so you can see the brand and the colors and all that. But first, I just wanted to show you some of my favorite colors. Also show you what I mean by watercolor versus gouache and some of the same colors. And the light is starting to creep in here fast, so I may end up having to change the lighting just a little bit. So just bear with me. The light changes a little bit. On this palette, I have my, where is it? Gouache, my ultramarine gouache in the whole bind here. If you use watercolor at all, you can already spot that that looks just like watercolor. On here, I have a pan watercolor ultramarine. Look at that. Exactly the same. 
See how they both look transparent? So that's what I mean by that. And if you have like a, um, any kind of ochre, like, uh, what is this, just yellow ochre? Oh no, that one's not it. They're all my colors here are so contaminated. That one's really contaminated too. In fact, you can't even see what that is. This ochre on here, if you have that on your palette, like in a watercolor palette, that's gonna be more opaque, uh, which is basically a gouache. So I wanted to show you just a couple of the Daniel Smith ones that I really like. I have this on my palette. It's a buff titanium. This is very much gouache, even though it's called watercolor because of how opaque it is. But I really like it. It's basically just a little bit darker than this paper on the or the uh, art creations that I have. It's just a nice neutral, and sometimes I like to use that instead of a white. I also like this Daniel Smith Cascade Green. This is also on my palette. This is a watercolor, but I love how granulated. It's just a, a neutral, kind of like evergreen tree color. And then I also love this Windsor Orange Red Shade for my red. I always like a little bit more of an orangey red than a red red. I just think it reads really wonderfully. It also mixes well with other things, like this Ultramarine Blue. Makes a nice purple without dirty, dirt, dirty, dirtying. <laughs> Sorry, dirtying. And then this gold ochre is really nice too from Windsor and Newton. Again, this is called watercolor, but this is in the gouache family because of how opaque it is. Look at how opaque that is. It's a really nice yellow, dirty yellow, orangey, orangey, dirty yellow is what I would say. I love it. Then if you've been around at all, you know I cannot get, I like, I, I have to have a burnt umber. Wait, no, 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 not burnt umber. I always get burnt umber and raw umber mixed up. Eesh, where's my raw umber? That's what I need, raw umber. Where is it? Where are you, raw umber? And I've got just to take that burnt umber off my palette out of this bin, because I squeeze that in the wrong tube all the time, raw. Raw and burnt are quite different. In fact, let's just go on and just show you. And I'll tell you, a lot of brands that call, are called raw umber look like burnt umber. And so sometimes you have to go with sepia. But this is like the best dirtying color. It will dirty things up really nicely. And if you've been around, you already know that because I talk about that all the time. And then you look how much warmer the burnt is, which you can use that to dirty things up too. I just find that the a raw umber does a lot better. Okay, let me show you these two from Windsor & Newton that I really love. The Naples Yellow and the Pale Rose. I will often use these instead of white to lighten something because then it doesn't make it look so chalky. It will be uh, have a little more color in it and life to it. These two mixed together make a nice kind of white flesh tone also. Then I also told you about this olive green from Talons. So I wanted to show you that, even though it's on my palette. Sometimes it's just nice. Oh, I wanted to show you this. What a great example. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Let me clean this off so we can get a... So often what I will do is carry this palette and something like this with all my smaller tubes of paint. The reason is because these are fresh and juicy and you just can't get the same thing from a dried pan. So there this color is from a dried pan. But if I wanted a thicker color, what I do is just stick my brush down in there and I can get more paint and a thicker coverage, whether it's watercolor or gouache or even acrylic gouache. I like to do that because sometimes, especially with white, so here's my white on here, even though it's dirty, even if you just, you know, really um, load a brush, you can only get so much out. But if I stick my brush down in the tube, I can really lay it on thick. 
and cover a lot more faster. So I do like to do that. That's a little pro tip. What is, I don't want to show you. I wanted to show you this um, gouache that's white ivory that I told you about. It's very sketch, but whoa, come squishing out. I don't even know that you'll see it very well on the sketchbook because it's very much like the talons, like a cream sketchbook. That's another reason I like it. It's a good like cover up a color. Or I like to use this because it is a little bit yellow. I like to use it instead of white. I don't like using white very much because it's so chalky. I always mix with other colors to lighten something. White is my last option. If you wanna learn more about that, I have a class called Everything You Want and Need to Know About Acrylics. Now in that I cover like acrylic ink, acrylics, acrylic gouache, and I give mixing tips in there, my favorite mixing mixes and all kinds of stuff about paint in that I talk about not using white. Even though you may use watercolor or just gouache, not acrylic gouache, you may still would enjoy that class because it has a lot of mixing, color mixing tips. Now that's also a nice kind of white flesh, um, like Caucasian flesh tint, and that is the pastel sand in the Turner. So I was gonna show you a few of these Turners that I really like. I love this grayish beige. And again, you can mix these with other colors. This is acrylic gouache. So this is gonna dry, what am I trying to say? Like you can't reconstitute it. This is grayish brown. I found these very useful for a lot of things. Landscape, when I went to the beach is when I bought these, but I've, I use them quite a bit and I'll mix them. Like these colors are nice to mix with yellow or with white to get a dirty color. This is the grayish green. This color makes me so happy. What a nice dirty green. And then this vermilion, this is just the happiest red. I mean, it's an orangey red, which is what I go to. Look at all that paint on there. Let me get all that off. But I love it. Bright, beautiful. Did I already talk about that? Maybe I already showed that up there. <laughs> oh well, you get to see it twice. And then I also wanted to show you this Ash Rose, which is the, well, I can't even remember the name of this brand. They don't have it on here. Very big. Uh, what is the brand that I like a lot? Um, 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 um. Hold on, goodness gracious. Why would you not put your name on there very big? It's, look how tiny it is. Look where it says Holbein right there. The tiniest letters. Oh boy, this is Ash Rose. Really pretty. Again, this is an acrylic gouache. Really nice, dirty pink. Okay, I wanted to show you the Liquitex acrylic gouache. And one of the reasons I'm doing little test strips here so you can see, or like little, man, my brain is not working this afternoon. Little swatches, that's the word, swatches. And so you can see how transparent or opaque they are. Now with the Liquitex acrylic gouache, you do not have to use much at all. It's very powerful, and so it goes a long way. This is burnt sienna. Ooh, how pretty is that? Will dry completely matte. And then this is the flash paint, and this is ultramarine. The flash paint is a little stickier. It's gorgeous. Look how transparent you can get it to. It can look just like watercolor, or you can use it thicker and get nice coverage. I love this paint so much. Now, I wanted to show you one other tip with watercolor or gouache, water soluble, remixable things, right? Let me get a watercolor out here for you. Let's just use an ultramarine. So I'm going to bring watercolor. Think of this as watercolor or gouache. It's titled gua um, gouache, but remember up here, we saw that this is still pretty transparent. So basically you can take something like a watercolor or gouache and mix it with an acrylic gouache. So sometimes if I'm wanting to paint with acrylic gouache, but I don't have a certain color, let's say I've ran out of the ultramarine, I will just use this. I'll take this out with me. Or vice versa, if I'm basically using my watercolor and gouache palette, if there is an acrylic gouache that I, or a color I'm out of, I'll grab my acrylic gouache. Now, the only thing you have to worry about is 
I don't want to use an acrylic wash and mix it up here on my watercolor palette because it will dry, you know, and stick to this. I can't re-wet it. So I always take like a, a yogurt lid or some other palette in case I'm wanting to do that. And I have at times still mixed it on here and it will peel off. But let me just show you what's nice about it is if you only bought acrylic wash and white, Basically, you can turn all of this into acrylic wash because when you mix it with the white that's acrylic, it will dry matte and not be re-wettable. Does that make sense? So basically, I will do this. We can just do it here. And when this dries, it won't be, you can't re-wet it because I've mixed the acrylic into it. So that's kind of a tip if you want to use maybe some old watercolor that you have, but make it more opaque and make it more like acrylic where it won't re-wet, you can just use some acrylic uh, gouache. So that is a tip that I do, and it makes my paints last longer if I'm in a pinch and have ran out of a color. I just have to make sure I'm not mixing on the wrong palette. That's the only thing. And really to make yourself be okay with that, maybe you should just grab another palette. And even if you do, let's say you go, oh no, I've mixed, I've mixed that. Well, before it dries, just wipe it off. It's no biggie. It's gonna be fine. And even if it did dry, because I have used this palette and done that, in fact, I do it a lot, because <laughs> you know, you're just in it and you, you forget, it will come off. Don't. Uh, not easily, but it will come off because, you know, you can always just scrape it off. This is acrylic. Now this is on a plastic, so it will just like come right off. So if you had a plastic palette, you wouldn't have to worry about it as much. Let me show you the palette I have here and the colors and brands that I have on here now. I do change this every now and then and it's quite dirty, so I'm going to need to clean it up some because, <laughs> you know, I'll mix stuff and things get dirty. So here's my full palette that I have here in this paint, this, uh, what is this brand? I always forget the name of this, Art Toolkit palette that I have. And this is my full palette. So you could take a screenshot so you can see the color name and the brand. I thought this would be the easiest way to do it. This is my full palette that is on here. It looks a lot more since it's all spread out. And then I just put my permanent white gouache right here. Obviously, I didn't swatch it because it's white. I think this is a beautiful palette and it works really well for me. These are the only two colors that are very similar. This is warmer. It's got more of a yellow undertone to it. And I do find I enjoy having both of those on there. The Hooker's Green I never use by itself. I always mix something with it to knock that green down, but it's just a bright, brilliant green and you almost need that on a palette. The brighter it is, the more you can knock it down but if it's already knocked down and neutral, you can't bring it back up. So there's my palette. I'm hoping that this was very informative for you guys. Also wanted to thank y'all. So many of you have bought my classes over the years and have loved them. I hear from y'all so much on how much you're loving the classes, how much you are gaining from the classes, how you watch them over and over because they're not just tutorial, but they're inspirational. And uh, I know you guys, those that have already bought the Painting Birds class have loved it. And for those that are gonna check it out and purchase this, I thank you so much. It makes this kind of thing doable for me to give free content here on YouTube. The classes are what support me. And it's also where you get so much more tutorial. If you like what you find here on YouTube, but you want to watch me paint more and see how I mix colors and those kinds of things, my classes are definitely where you'll find that. We try to make them affordable. We also make them quite long. You get a lot in those classes. So I just want to tell you thank you. That, that means so much that y'all would want to learn from me and that you would use your hard-earned money to purchase my classes. It just, yeah, it means a ton to both me and Grady. And I just wanted to tell you face-to-face, -face, perhaps let me take my glasses off, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It just, yeah, I can't tell you. Every time we see a class sell, we're just like, what? Uh, same thing with my paintings when those sell, we're always just like, what? So you guys are the best. I hope this week was informative and inspirational. And that's it for this week. I'll see you back here in two. Bye. You guys are the best.